now what we are going to see is a safe transition when I'm already in a disadvantaged situation. In that, in that case, I'm going to be on the ground, it's going to control my neck and my throat actually with the intention to choke me. So we are here and what we are going to see is the many angles to produce this safe transition. So the first thing is that I need to avoid him to choke me. So the first act that I'm going to do is to bring my hand to his forearm to, uh, in a certain case, try to control the strength that he's putting on his arm to choke my, my throat. So the, first, the second thing is that I'm going to create an angle that actually helps me to stand up a bit and create an imbalance in, in the opening. So in that case, my head is now is going to go backwards and I'm going to really put my head near, near his arm. So by doing this, now I'm going to turn my hara, turn my angle to a more diagonal position. So I created this angle between his arm and his thorax. So I've changed that angle, so I've changed the strength also as a consequence. So while I'm here, now I can uh, bring my knee up and stay a bit up, more than I was. So that is the first uh, observation that we have. So now from here, I have his leg that I can use. So that's going to be the next step. I'm going to pass my, my hand and I'm going to, with the other hand, do this. So by using, by causing pain, I'm going to imbalance him. Otherwise, he can regain position. So the thing is that I'm going to use my forearm and in his leg. So by causing pain, in this angle, I'm going to imbalance him. Now, to be possible to do this, to be possible to cause this pain, the detail that we need to see is that his knee needs to be on the ground. Otherwise, if he moves his leg, he's able to move his leg. He will regain position and I'll be in a risky situation. So when I do that, I need to guarantee that I'm forcing his leg down, impressing this point, causing pain. Now from here, once he's unbalanced because of the pain, now I can have another target, that is the ankle. So I'm going to fracture the ankle after causing pain with my knees. That is a classical jujutsu target also. So when I'm here, now I have his lateral area that I'm going to, to gain. So by keeping a low hara or keeping my feet on the ground, protecting my internal areas, I'm going to turn around and go to his back. Now in this situation, the thing is, just from here, to be in the right position, in, in classical jujutsu, anatomical areas, important anatomical areas are target, I need to really contract my hara, contract gluteals, contract my muscles on the leg, and keep my heart up pointing down. So I have those internal areas protected. Also, by doing this, I'm also protecting myself, avoiding him to uh, bring me down again. So from here, my hand can come, for example, on, on the face or on the neck. And I can also go well, with my secondary weapon for many good targets that I have from this angle. As I have arm, I have the inguinal area, groin area, I can step on the chest line, also I can open to step on the central areas of the thorax as we have caught, or through hips, trying to achieve more damage with the knife, or I can actually go directly to the throat. Doesn't matter if cutting or stabbing. And so this is a, some considerations of classical jujitsu on a safe transition.